The holiday season is the time of year when many of us like to show thanks to people in the service industry with a tip. Local financial instructor Michael Maserant of the Retirement Education Foundation joins us with ways to fit holiday tipping into your spending plan. Good morning to you. Thanks for being here. Of course. Thanks for having me. So tipping, I feel like, has become a really hot topic, especially on the, the tales of the pandemic and in mm -hmm. how we decided we want to show our thanks to people. What are some just good best practices for tipping? For sure. So people have wanted to show their support to the service industry, to people, especially the regulars at a coffee shop or at a a beauty salon or things like that and really around the holidays they want to kick that into overdrive and show their appreciation to really go above and beyond with, with tipping. And one thing we always want to make sure people understand is to make sure they have a plan going into the holidays because it's really easy to give $20 there, $40 there, $50 there, and all of a sudden they might have run out of cash earlier than expected for the holidays. That's a good point. It can get, I guess, a little out of control. Um, and, and then let's wrap up some of the top financial stories of the year. I mean, we're heading into the new year in just a few days. For sure. So 2023 was a really interesting year. It was really, the, I mean, the year of the U.S. consumer. And if there's one thing we in the U.S. do really well, it's spending. And coming into 2023, inflation was very high. So the Fed's been trying to bring inflation down, cool the economy off a little bit. And they've been doing that by raising interest rates. They raised interest rates 11 times. We're at 22 year highs for interest rates, trying to cool the economy off, bring that inflation down. And so far, fingers crossed, they're doing it pretty well so far. They're not down to their 2% target yet, but they are getting it down They're in the low threes. Now it's important to keep in mind, falling inflation does not mean falling prices. Prices are still going up, it's just slower than they were before. So people who are expecting maybe a great bargain in 2024 and something they had their eye on, that might not be the case, but inflation is falling, the prices aren't rising as fast anymore. And what types of impacts have, you know, have these rates been having on your clients, for example? Well, so a lot of people, they see rates most common with things like mortgages. We've seen mortgage rates get as high as you know, in, in the low 8% range for a 30-year fixed mortgage, and credit card debt. That's why we always try to get people to make sure they're paying off credit card debt and not letting that balance roll because we're seeing credit card rates as high as you know low 20s to mid 20%, wow. which can really harm people trying to get out of that debt. And aside from that, you know, aside from paying down that debt, what other tips do you have for people you know, going into 2024 just with, with best practices with finances? So the start of the year, everyone's got their New Year's resolutions. And a great one is always trying to get a budget and a financial plan ready for 2024. So really sitting down to make sure you understand what's my income, what do I like to spend money on, and making sure we're not letting money leak anywhere. And once you know how much you can start saving per month, make sure you have timelines for those spending goals. Because if we're gonna spend the money in the next six months, that should be saved in cash somewhere very safe. If we're saving for something down the road like retirement, that should be invested where you can afford a bit more risk. It really all comes down to when are you spending those dollars. And you are a financial instructor who specializes in retirement. Mm -hmm. What are some tips you can give people Really, that, so that, that time frame mapping, people don't quite understand. They think, well, you know, if, if I'm not going to spend this dollar for maybe five years, I'll put, it in, I'll put it in my checking account. Well, it maybe can grow somewhere more if we're not spending it for five more years. But if we need it in a couple of weeks, that should not be in the stock market. The stock market's too risky. We can't have dollars in the stock market that we need to spend soon. Okay, so just to, sort of reframing the way you think about timing, and because it, it's difficult. It's difficult, it really especially is. when you're starting your career, to think about retirement. It really is, and that's, you know, the earlier you start, the better. That's always the case, and you're never, you're never too late. If you can increase your 401k, your 403b savings, your IRA savings by one, two, three percent per year, you're gonna get a raise every couple of years anyways, and so if you're increasing your 401k, contributions by that amount, you're not even going to feel it, but right. you're, you're saving more and more and more for retirement down the road. Very good points. Thank you so much, Michael, of for course. joining us.